Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative with another Divi tutorial. Now, this week I'm going to be exploring a little thing that I encountered trying to make the spacing before and after a bullet list or a number list to fit what I wanted it to do and to be able to target those effectively. Now, it may sound really simple, but it's not quite as simple as you may think, and I'll show you that, and I'll show you some of the solutions I came up with, and ultimately the best solution. So let's take a look at this. So I think it will be a good idea if you follow this blog post, because in it I kind of go through a, a tiny little uh, process that I uh, of discovering which is the best solution for this. Uh, let me just explain um, what we're doing. So I have a demo website here with a bunch of paragraphs, and ordered and unordered lists. And you can kind of see, I have a little bit of background color set just so you can see the bottom and top, but um, you can see there's different scenarios where a list will be between paragraphs or before paragraphs or just at the end of a paragraph. Okay, so there are, or even by itself with, with no paragraph. So to keeping those situations in mind, I wanted to make some kind of code snippet that would work effectively to adjust this spacing between where the last line of the paragraph is and where the first line of the list, or or even the bottom. Um, we'll just stick to the top for now. So like, wherever this ends, how much space is between there and there? That is what I want to explore and give you the solution for that because in Divi, there's no settings to adjust that. Just look, this is default Divi and look at the difference here. Because there was no paragraph after this one, the spacing isn't right. And there's nothing you can do to fix it, except, yeah, I don't know, add a paragraph below it. But if, if, the, if there's no paragraph after it, there's a problem. So I'm gonna show you about adjusting this. So let's be sure to follow along because I kind of walked through that, the process I went through. So first thing I thought of as well, and I've done this before, I'll just add some inline CSS. And, and you can see, here's an example. So take the P tag where the paragraph is, in this case, for example, um, like this here, okay? Or, or no, no, let's use this one. So like, let's say here, I want to make this space work. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it. So what I'm doing is within the P tag saying style, maybe margin, bottom, or top, whichever, whatever we're doing, in this case, the paragraph is above, so we would say margin bottom, and then I'm putting like 20 pixels. Again, just an example of what I could do. Doing this inline, if I only had one instance of this and I wasn't too worried about it, like it wasn't going to happen again, I knew I wasn't going to have more lists, this is the only spot on the site, I might as well just do it inline, sure. So I would come over here, um, open up uh, this particular text module, go to the text tab, and Sometimes it's wrapped in P tags and sometimes it's not. In this case, it's not, so. so we'll just put them in there. Now watch this. I can go to the first P tag and, and put a space in there before the closing bracket and paste my class and try to remember to put my quotes for the style. Okay, so there you can see that it's fixed. It works, right? I mean, check it out. It matches the space that's in these other ones. Remember, let me undo that. See how it was? So by putting that in there, I adjusted that for this type of situation. And again, that may work fine for you. But again, it's kind of a one-time thing. So let's, let's go into another solution. Next, I was like, hmm, okay, so I'm working on adjusting this space on a blog post. Well, I'll just target all my ordered lists and all my unordered lists and you could do this if you wanted. I have it targeting the post content module and the text module. Now that will change for you depending on the situation, but let's just say for example, I, um, here, I'll do this. I am going to use a Chrome extension called user CSS just for the preview. What I could do, let's say I got rid of all of that. All right, now I just have ordered list and unordered list and I'm targeting them and I'm saying margin top 20 and I could change it to extreme just so you can see it, right? So you can see it's above here, it's above here, here, and he yeah, here, all of, all of them, okay? And I could do the same thing on the bottom. I could say 
margin bottom and then do something. All right, and it's going to affect all of them, okay? So one of the very first problems we're going to face doing this very generic ordered list or unordered list, it's affecting our menu. It's going to be affecting anything like that that uses a menu um, and, and other areas like, like a table of contents or like any kind of things like that. So we have to be really careful with targeting this generically, right? So that's going to be our one of our first problems. The other problem is we may not want the space around the top and bottom just generically across the site. Like in every situation like this, we may not want it. So what you can do to improve it even further is what I have, I call it the best solution, but again, it's um, maybe you'll have a better solution or an alternative. You can share that in the comments, that'll be fine. Um, but what I found works really well is using sibling selectors. Um, you may not be familiar with them because they're not used very often, but the way sibling selectors work, you, you combine two selectors with a plus symbol. So in our case, it's combining the paragraph and the list together and then targeting the second sibling. But we're only targeting that second sibling if the other sibling is there. Does that make sense? Naturally, also, since they're both siblings, they have to have a common parent. Um, and so they have to be within a div. So in our case, like in a text module or any whatever Divi module it is, they're in the text area, they're going to be siblings anyhow. And so it works great. Um, so again, it's siblings that are, there's two elements, they're within a parent element or div, and it's targeting the second sibling, but they have to be connected. Um, so let's look at an example. I know that can be a lot to take in. So here's the first one, adjust space above a list that follows a paragraph. Hmm, okay. So we're putting space or adjusting it more or less, the space ab above a list, so above an ordered list or a numbered list that follows a paragraph. So let's try that one. Copy that. We'll go over here. We have a defaults again, so we'll paste that in. Oh, there you go. You can see, that's, in fact, that's, um, let's change this number. You can see what it's doing. It's adding this, it's adding extra space at this point above the list. So it's adding it to the list because that's the second selector. Um, P plus UL is the selector. So it's two siblings. So it's adding it to the second one, the UL, the unordered list. And again, it's adding that space above it. Notice that it's not adding it to, oops, I keep going back too far, I'm trying to show you. Notice it's not adding it to um, the second one. I'm pointing at my screen, but the second one or the third one there. Notice it's not actually adding it to them. That's because um, there's no paragraph above it. Okay, so again, it has to be siblings, paragraph and list. The other thing to include here is adjust the spacing above a paragraph that follows a list. So think of it as the spacing at the bottom of a list. So we'll copy that one in too. And we'll just paste that in. So let's play with this one for a little. You can see what this one is doing. Notice it's putting the space at the bottom. See that? Notice it is not putting the space on this list or this list. And the reason it's not doing that is because it doesn't have that sibling paragraph below it. Okay. So let's say we want them all to be like 30, just for that, kicks and giggles. Now they're all consistent. Um, again, that's gonna depend on you, whether you want the space above or below. And you can also use negatives, right? So I could say negative 20. Oh, that gets up pretty far. <laughs> you gotta watch that. Um, negative something, you know, you can use negatives if you need to, uh, and that's gonna be fine. All right, so I hope you found that little exploration helpful. And again, it, you may have a better way of doing it, and I'd love to hear that. You can share it with everyone as well. So it's kind of one of those things with code. There's lots of ways to do something, um, and that's just what I found by uh, needing, that, needing that little solution for my problem. It seemed to work, and um, I was happy with it, but 
wanted to share that with you. All right, we'll see you all in our next video. Be sure to subscribe and follow along for videos like this, things about Divi, how to do things in Divi and all that.